Now, text data is very special. In contrast to the data captured by machines, such as sensors, text data is produced by humans. And they also are meant to be consumed by humans. And this has some interesting consequences. Because it's produced by humans, it tends to have a lot of useful knowledge about people's preferences, people's opinions about everything. And that makes it possible to mine text data to discover those latent preferences of people, which could be very useful to build an intelligent system to help people. You can think about the scientific literature also, and it's a way to encode our knowledge about the world. So it's very high quality content, yet we have difficulty in digesting all the content. Now, as a result of the fact that text is consumed by uh, we humans, we also need intelligent software tools to help people digest the content, or otherwise we would miss a lot of useful content. This slide shows that the human really plays an important role in text data mining. We have to consider human in the loop, and we have to consider the fact that the text is generated by human. So here are some examples of useful text information systems. This is by no means a complete list of all the applications. I categorize them into different categories, but you can probably imagine other uh, kinds of applications. So let's take a look at some of them. Search, for example, we all know search engines, especially web search engines. I bet all of you are using Google or Bing or another web search engine all the time. And we also have library search systems. And in fact, uh, wherever you have a lot of text data, you would have a search engine. So for example, you might have a search box on your laptop right, to search the content on your computer. So that's one kind of application systems. But we also have filtering systems or recommender systems. Those systems can push information to users. They can recommend useful information to users. So I list some again. News filters, spam filters, literature or movie recommenders. Now, not all of them are necessarily recommending information to you. For example, email filter, spam email filter. This is actually to filter out the spams from your uh, inbox. Right. But uh, in nature, these are similar systems in that they have to make a binary decision regarding whether to retain a particular document or discard it. Another kind of systems are categorization systems. So for example, in uh, handling emails, you might uh, prefer automatic uh, sorter that would uh, automatically sort incoming emails into appropriate uh, folders that you created. Or we might want to categorize product reviews into positive or negative. Uh, and news agencies might uh, be interested in categorizing news articles into uh, all kinds of subject categories. Those are all categorization systems. Uh, finally, there are also systems that might do more analysis and or you can say mine uh, the text data. And these can be text mining systems or information extraction systems. And they can be used to analyze text data in more detail to discover potentially useful knowledge. For example, uh, companies might be interested in discovering major complaints from their customers based on the email messages that uh, they have received from the customers. Right, so having a system to support that uh, would uh, really help uh, improve their productivity and the customer relations. Also, in business intelligence, companies are often interested in analyzing product reviews to understand the relative strengths of their own products in comparison with competitors. And, and so these are all examples of these uh, text mining systems. And in bioinformatics, uh, we have a lot of data, and particular literature data. So there's also a great opportunity of using computer systems to analyze the data to automatically read literature and to gain knowledge and to help biologists make discoveries. And you can imagine many others. So the point is that with so much text data, we can build a very useful systems to help people in many different ways. Now, how do we build these systems? Well, these actually uh, are the main uh, technologies that we'll be talking about in this course and the other course that I'm teaching for this specialization. The main techniques for building these systems and also for harnessing big text data are text retrieval and text data mining. So I used this picture to show the relation between these two, uh, some of the different techniques. 
we started with big text data, right? But for any applications, we don't necessarily need to use all the data. Often we only need the small subset of the most relevant data, and that's shown here. So text retrieval is to convert big raw text data into that small subset of most relevant data that are most useful for a particular application. And this is usually done by search engines. And so this will be covered in this course. After we have got a small amount of relevant data, we also need to further analyze the data to help people digest the data, data or to turn the data into actionable knowledge. And this step is called text mining, where we use a number of techniques to mine the data to get the useful knowledge or patterns. And the knowledge can then be used in many different applications. And this part, text mining, will be covered in the other courses that I'm teaching, called text mining and analytics. The emphasis of this course is on basic concepts and practical techniques in text retrieval. More specifically, we will cover how search engines work, how to implement a search engine, how to evaluate a search engine so that you know one search engine is better than another or one method is better than another, how to improve and optimize a search engine system, and how to build a recommender system. We also hope to provide a hands-on experience on multiple aspects. One is to create a test collection for evaluating search engines. This is very important for uh, knowing which technique actually worked well and whether your search engine system is really good for your application. The other aspect is to experiment with search engine algorithms. In practice, you will have to face choices of different algorithms, so it's important to know how to compare them and to figure out uh, how they work or maybe potentially uh, to improve them. And finally, we'll provide a, a platform for uh, you to do a search engine competition where you can compare your different ideas to see which idea works better on some data set. The prerequisites for this course are minimum. Basically, we hope you have some basic concepts of computer science, for example, data structures. And we hope you to be comfortable with programming, especially in C++, because that's the language that we'll use for some of the programming assignments. The format is lectures plus quizzes, as uh, often happens in MOOCs. And we also will provide programming assignments for those of you who have the resources to do that. The main reference book for this course is a recent book that uh, Xiang Messen and I have co-authored. The title is Text Data Management and Analysis, A Practical Introduction to Information Retrieval and Text Mining. However, this reference book is not required in the sense that if you follow all the lecture videos closely, then you should have no problem with working on the quiz problems and the programming assignment to pass the course. However, the book would be useful to uh, give you a high level and systematic uh, description of all the topics covered in this course, plus some others. It would also help you understand some topics in more depth. So if you have problem with following some of the videos, the book may be useful to you. The book is also the reference book uh, for another book on text mining and analytics. If you're interested in buying the book, there's a link here, and there should be substantial discount for the students of this course. There are also quite a few other useful reference books and readings, and they are available through the link at the bottom of this slide. Finally, and this is the course schedule, and that's just a, a topic map for the rest of the course, and it shows the topics that we will cover in the remaining lectures. This picture also shows a basic flow of information in a text information system. So starting from the big text data, the first step is to do some natural language content analysis, because text data is in the form of natural language text. So we need to understand the text to some extent, at least, in order to do something useful for users. So this is the first topic that we'll cover. And then on top of that, uh, as you can see, there are two boxes here. Those are two uh, types of systems that can be used to help people get access to the most relevant data. 
or in other words, those are the two kinds of systems that would convert big text data into small relevant text data. Search engines are helping users to search or to quer query the data to get the most relevant documents out. Recommended systems are to recommend information to users, to push information to users. So those are two uh, complementary ways of getting users connected to the most relevant data uh, at the right time. So this part is called text access, and this will be the next topic. And after we cover that, we're going to cover a number of topics all about the search engines. Now, the text access topic is a brief topic, a brief coverage of the two kinds of systems. In the remaining topics, we'll cover search engine in much more detail. That includes text retrieval problem, text retrieval methods, how to evaluate these methods, implementation of the system, and web search applications. And after these, we're going to cover the recommender system. So this is what you expect uh, in the rest of this course. Thanks.